Hello, dear leader. You know, working with fivefold ministry gifts and leaders has been an intensive part of my life for many years now. Um, especially fivefold ministry gifts, but all leaders. And it's been a concern of mine, part of my life, part of my love, and certainly part of my prayers now for 36 years. I've been among them, I've worked with them, prayed for them, learned from them. I've been mentored by them. I've been taught by them. I've had things fathered in me through them. I've had things imparted from the Lord to me through them. I've been taught by them, encouraged by them, counseled by them. I have in turn done the same, taught them, mentored them, fathered them, imparted to them, counseled them, cried with them, laughed with them, had a good time with them, and I love them. Very early on in my ministry, I began to realize the challenges that ministers of our day and age and the issues that they're facing, the hurts, the pains, the wounds that some of them have, the things that can happen in ministry that can literally throw us for a loop if we're not prepared. Not only am I talking about maybe the pastor, but the pastor's wife, or if the uh, wife happens to be the pastor, the pastor's husband, or any fivefold ministry gifts wife or husband. These wounds, I'm talking about these hurts, these pains, this thing that can happen, is something that I've seen literally take people out of their God-given calling and even, quite frankly, uh, cause people to end up in divorce and every other kind of thing. But I've also seen the great joy that ministry can bring, the victory, the triumph, the uh, excitement, the enthusiasm. I would not want to do anything else in my life, personally. I've had the joy of starting churches. I've had the joy of pastoring churches, large and small, <laughs> and in between size. As uh, well as oversee the same. So, I have quite a bit of experience in this area. I've pastored inner city churches, started inner city churches. I've started city churches, suburb churches, and rural community churches, which actually I'm working in right now. And now I'm overseeing churches even overseas. I can tell you this for sure. Few professions accommodate such a wide variety of persons, men and women, formally educated, self-educated, from different backgrounds, young, churches that uh, and ministries that are large. Many of them have much money. Many of them don't or just starting. Some of them are on top. Some of them are struggling along with every type of, of situation. Many, everybody's different personalities and situations and all these things must and can be talked about. Then there are the different types of fivefold ministry gifts and anointings. I mean, you have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and then you've got all the other type of ministries like youth ministries and children ministries and, uh, you know, worship ministries and music ministries and so on. The bottom line is each of you are important. Each of you is precious and much loved. You're chosen, you're ordained, you're sent, and this sent you all facing the same basic issues in life. But yet, it's different because of the circumstances and situations that you may be facing, the problems and challenges you may be facing. Everybody has faced to a certain extent, but maybe to you right now it's the most important thing that you're facing. Some of us have already been there, got through some of these things. Some of us, some of us will be going there. All of us face the same challenges, though, the same principal challenges. You may be from a different country, different cultures, different backgrounds, different political understandings, and so on. It is my intense involvement with these ministries that I have now 
heard repeatedly some of these phrases. Phrases like burnout and dropout and forced out and thrown out and removed out and discouraged and disappointed and disillusioned. Across this earth right now, there is many people that are having special clinics, raising up special centers, having special seminars, just for res restora restoration or restorative uh, type of um, efforts for those that for some reason find themselves beat down, find themselves, uh, you know, discouraged and despondent from the effects of what can happen to them in some type of ministry situation. And of course what the enemy tries to do to all fivefold ministry gifts are those that are working the way you are for God. Now I applaud all of these efforts and uh, the cures are important to try to get people back and, and restored is wonderful but there's an old saying that I like called an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This is what this particular group is all about. Prevention. Yes, we want to restore you if you've been through something that has temporarily taken you out and put you on the sidelines, so to speak. But even more than that, we would like to give you the wisdom of all of these different ministry gifts that will join this group that we can share with one another what they have learned what we have learned that can possibly prepare you and help you as an act of prevention before you go. The truth of the matter is there's more than 1,500 pastors, just pastors alone, not a let, uh, let alone all these other ministry gifts and things we're talking about that are leaving ministry every month just in America alone and, and not as many to replace them. Two things are happening here, I think. I think some of it is God removing people who really aren't called to do that. But I also think the enemy is attacking at the very core of ministry because he desires to take those out that can lead others into salvation and into the things of God. This is happening at an unprecedented rate. And in 1990, when I established my first church in Reno, Nevada, I went to the Lord about this and asked him specifically to give me wisdom and teachings that I could uh, really get to the root problems of what's causing all of this, and he did. He began to share with me how our foundation in ministry really hasn't been very good, and he began to share with me what to do about it, how to, to prepare people and to instruct people along certain lines that maybe they haven't understood or possibly they didn't get in Bible school or seminary or whatever. And to help them understand the importance of the biblical principles that he put in the Word of God that will give us the best advantage to overcome all that Satan throws at us and life throws at us. I want you to know that I want this particular group not to be like other groups where people just go over and post anything. I want only posts on this group, only videos and comments that relate to ministry, helping ministry, encouraging ministry. It can be scriptures, yes. Videos are fine. Uh, but uh, blogs are fine. But, but I want it to focus on that particular thing. Other things will not be received because it's not an open group for everybody. It's going to be a closed group that will help ministries. And because of that, I have invited you. And also, I want you to invite your friends. If you know somebody in ministry, please invite them. And tell them that this group has been founded for this specific purpose. Um, this is what this is all about. Preparation, prevention, encouragement, adjustment, healing, and if needed, restoration. I want you to know my door is always going to be open. Uh, if you ask me and you need me, I can give you my phone number and you can call me. We can talk. But I hope that it won't just be me. It will be others that will share back and forth. This is not about me. This is not about something I'm doing to you know, somehow elevate myself in your eyes. This is about all of us sharing together um, and ministers coming together. I learned something years ago when I was in a certain 
ministerial, and I've been in a lot of them, fellowship. And that was sometimes when we had these meetings, we would have the, the big meetings where the guys that were real popular and everybody knew would speak. And those are good. That, uh, you certainly can receive all of, uh, from people that, you know, are kind of the, the leaders of the leaders, so to speak, out there. But I noticed something when we would have the smaller meetings where it would just be the small town pastors in a certain area or a group of people maybe from a certain area that would get together that those were the best meetings and some of the wisdom that was shared by these people that were not as well known maybe rural pastors people who pastored in small towns or had smaller type of ministries or even missionaries from overseas that maybe wouldn't get an opportunity to share some of the things they knew uh, garnered some of the best wisdom that I've ever heard quite frankly far beyond what I heard in some of those larger meetings and I received much from it and this is why I would like to have those with large ministries and those who maybe don't have large ministries share what they've learned over the years those of you who have a smaller type of works but yet have been doing them in rural communities for many years it takes a great grace to do that it takes a lot of wisdom to do that and it takes a special anointing to do that please don't think because you don't maybe have a large ministry that affects um, hundreds and millions of people or whatever it is that you don't have something to contribute I'd like everybody to contribute those who have been in ministry a long time and those starting out please list your prayer requests please list your concerns this is what this site's all about we need each other all of us can contribute there are no superstars in God's kingdom relationship and fellowship some of us come from different backgrounds but I learned we can learn from each other so I'm glad that all of you from different backgrounds can join and be part I've learned a lot of things I've learned things from as an example when I started out Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie from Calvary Chapel I've learned about soul winning from them I learned as I as I went to the next phase into the old-time Pentecostal type of churches for a while in the season I learned about prayer I learned a lot about intercessory prayer from them and waiting on God and different things like that I learned amongst the charismatics I've learned amongst the word of faith I'm still learning today what I'm saying is even denominational folks have taught me a lot and I'm always willing to hear and learn from different perspectives I hope you are too no matter what your background your love you're more than important in ministry you're vital something I have learned the hard way our fellowship with the Lord must always come first and I want to say this to you Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 through 15 is a wonderful scripture and it tells us that the very first thing that Paul always put first was that he would know Christ you know my life has not always signified that I've got to tell you I got sidetracked a few times in my life it's very important that we put God first in our prayers in our fellowship time and all of that but I find that many times God speaks to us through other people so taking some time during your day for a little bit of a devotion so to speak on this particular group may be the answer one of the answers to you learning growing and expanding and the answer to what you may be facing and the challenges that may be ahead I hope you will join us I hope that you will feel comfortable here and that you'll contribute I want to thank you for taking the time to to watch this and to share whatever it is the Lord has you share always remember this I'm praying for you we love you and we thank God for you this is Pastor Tom